This is a good one, guys. This is a good one. On the rattle trap. I thought I was stuck. That's a nice, healthy bass. What is up y'all and welcome back to the channel. Today we are out here at the SFA, Stephen F. Austin College Ag Pond. And these guys are not too happy to see me. Walking through. <laughs> these guys are not too happy to see me. And they're about to charge at me. But anyway, we are out here at the Stephen F. Austin College Ag Pond. And we're gonna be doing a little fishing here. Been here a few times. Caught a few nice bass, nothing humongous. A couple twos and threes. There we go. <laughs> Look at that big mama. That is a big one. That is a beauty. <laughs> really good. Yep, here, SFA. Heck Catching yeah. biggins. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the release on it. Thank you, big girl. Oh, yeah. Bam. Yeah. Stuff, brother. <laughs> But I'm gonna be showing y'all some tips and tricks on how to fish a pressure pond such as this because this pond gets fished a lot by a lot of the students. And sometimes catching the fish here can be a little tricky. So I'm gonna be showing y'all a few tips and tricks on what to do when you come to a pressure pond. First thing we're gonna start off with is the first thing I always start with pretty much with any pond that I know that gets fished a lot. And that's gonna be something finesse. Something that goes to the bottom and you can finesse. Usually like a wacky worm, a jig, stuff like that. But Based off of my last tournament and what my aunt used a lot, especially during the winter, I'm gonna be throwing a wacky worm first in a few spots. I'm gonna hit that. And if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna go around with like a spinner bait, chatter bait, or maybe even a lipless crank bait, depending on if I can miss the grass or not. And we're gonna try doing that. Because this is a pretty nice pond, there's a lot of area to cover. So that's what we're gonna start with is the wacky worm right over here in this area. Like we're gonna go with the shallow part over here, hit the hit the grass. There's a few sticks and ledges with rocks. We're gonna hit that too with the wacky worm and we're gonna go from there. All right, so first thing first, like I said, we're gonna use the wacky worm. This is just a weighted wacky rig with a green pumpkin Senko on it. Give it a cast. And we're just gonna bounce that baby off the bottom. Okay, so that was a no-go on the wacky worm, no bites at all, but I'm seeing a lot of uh, boils and movement in the water, so I'm thinking maybe they're going after something more uh, fast moving, something flashy, more like a spinnerbait. So that's what we're gonna tie on next and throw is a spinnerbait to cover more area more quickly and to give it that big flash and that big movement that maybe these fish are looking for. So we're gonna throw that on again. All right, so here's the spinnerbait. This is the spinnerbait I always use. I always use uh, War Eagle spinnerbaits. Why? Well, let me tell you why. One, because I don't like spinnerbaits where the blades are too big, because I have a feeling, and maybe just a hunch, that the blades kind of get in the way of the bite. That way, I want the blade and the hook to pretty much, pretty much be straight parallel with each other and match. I don't want that blade to overlap that hook in any way, just in case, because if a bass comes and bites that blade, and that blade gets in the way of the hook set, that, that bait is just gonna slide straight out of that bass's mouth. So that's one reason why I don't use big bladed spinner baits. And a lot of people are gonna you know, bash on me and say, well, that's not true. Well, it may not be for them, but I know for me and from my experiences for fishing, I always go for a small blade spinner bait with uh, the hook and the blade match, just like this. So that's what I always throw. 
And I always try to go for like a uh, chartreuse, white, blue color. This is more like a bluegill color pattern. Now if you wanna throw it all white, that's a really good shad color pattern, another good color. So always throw those and always fish what you're comfortable with. But it's also not bad to try new stuff. Now another thing to do in the winter that I didn't mention just a minute ago is when you're throwing the spinnerbait, what you want to do is when you throw it out there, don't instantly retrieve it. Let it sink a little bit. That way it gets lower water. It gets down in the lower water, not so much in the top water because that's where those bass are going to be right now in this time of year, especially in the winter when it's cold and it's dark most of the time. They're going to be down there sitting at the bottom of the water waiting for bait to come by so they can strike. So that's what you want to do. You want to cast that spinnerbait out, give it like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and then slowly start cranking that bad boy in. All right, so no luck on the spinner bait at all after like 100 casts, no luck at all. So what we're gonna move to next is something that these fish are more familiar with because there are perch in this pond. So something they might be more familiar with is a lipless crankbait and a bluegill pattern like that. Now this is just a little cheap Ozark Trail lipless crankbait that I got from Walmart. So we're gonna see if this guy can actually catch a fish out here. But I'm having a good feeling about those patterns because that is a really good you know, pattern right there, a bluegill pattern. So we're gonna throw this guy and uh, see what he can do for us. Alright, we have the bluegill pattern lipless crankbait on. Now let's see if we can catch one on this. Oh, this is a good one guys, this is a good one. On the rattle trap. I thought I was stuck. He's barely got it in. He's barely got it in. And butt foot. Uh, there we go. That's how we do it. Oh, you got a hook deep in him, guys. Right there. First, and then we'll get that one. Okay. There we go. Not a not a monster, but still a good one. Heck yeah, let me wash them off. That's what I'm talking about. That's a nice healthy bass. All right, guys, we're out here at SFA. Just caught me a nice one right there. Yeah, caught it on the rattle trap. I've been throwing spinner baits, crank baits, and wacky worms out here for about an hour now. No luck. Third cast on the rattle trap. This guy absolutely destroys it. Freaking awesome, guys. Let's get a release on him. All right, buddy, thank you for the catch. Mwah. See you next time. Beautiful, beautiful guys. That was awesome. Oh, this is such a pressure pond, so catching a fish out of here is really difficult, but when you catch one, man, they put up a really, really good fight. That was awesome. I'm gonna throw that rod trap out again, try to catch another one. That was sick. Okay, so how I caught that fish was, that little two pounder right there, is I was fishing right here on this point, right here, and I was casting into the water feature over there, and I was slowly retrieving it back with that lipless crankbait. Like I'm talking like slow, like I was nicking on the bottom. And I hit a rock and I kind of pulled on a little bit and that's when that fish attacked. I guess it was sitting right there next to that rock and it saw me do that and it saw that little bait move and jerk like that and that triggered a reaction strike with him. So he just nailed it. But that was an awesome catch, y'all. That was awesome. Really awesome. Once again, at SFA, fishing a little ag pond, catching bass. That was awesome. Alright guys, that is it for today. It's been like, I don't even know, like 30, 45 minutes since that last bass. So they're not biting apparently today. It is getting pretty cold and it looks like it's about to rain. So I'm about to head back in. But I just wanted to show you all those tips and tricks for fishing a pressured pond like the Stephen F. Austin Ag Pond. 
because this is like really one of the most pressure ponds in Nacogdoches. So I just wanted to show you all that no matter how pressure the pond is, you can always almost come out and pull at least one bass out of the pond. And always go with the tips and tricks I showed you all today. Always start with something finesse and fishing off bottom like a jig or a wacky worm or a weighted Texas rig, anything like that that's on bottom and is very finessey. And then always move up to something that is more shiny, more active and more what's the word fast moving i guess would be the word it, like a uh, spinner bait chatter bait crank bait lipless crank bait jerk bait anything like that because this time of year they're either going to be hitting bottom water or mid-level water so that is the two main levels you want to go for right there especially this time of year and always fishing at pressure ponds like this so guys thank you so much for watching today's video if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe to the dark relaxing channel guys make sure that notification bell so you get more awesome notifications about videos like this Give me the big thumbs up if you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I always try to get back to y'all. Guys, y'all keep it real. I love y'all. And I'll catch y'all on the next fishing video. Peace.